Welcome to Platform Series 4 Workflow Demonstration. In this video, we're going to describe how Platform Series 4 can significantly improve your workflow through the ability to ingest, manage assets, edit, render, and transcode all on the same platform server. To start with, let's look at an example of a Platform Series Online with multiple editors connected. The first thing we're going to do is take a look at Chris, our editor, which is going to peruse the system for assets. As you can see, we're logged into our Mac and we have a browser updated in Safari with the platform software loaded. This simple interface allows users from any workstation on the network to control and manage the data and the services of the platform system. We're logged in here with the user Chris and Chris has access to various volumes in the system. In order to take a look at what's in those volumes, Chris can mount those volumes or also search the platform spaces. When searching the space, they have the ability to take a look at the files, potentially review those assets, look at the proxies, check out the metadata. Everything is controlled through the one simple browser interface and that allows Chris as an editor, very quick access to the information in the system. If Chris wants to open a platform space or a volume, he simply double clicks on it and the system brings up that volume. All the information that's on the platform server is readily available for him to go ahead and edit and work with as he would a normal local drive. Let's take a look at a common workflow to demonstrate the power of the platform series 4. We have two users connected to the platform. One is the administrator that will play the DIT role in ingesting and backing up and setting up projects in the system. And the second is our editor, Chris, which will open up the volume, do some editing, export, and transcode the footage, all through the same browser interface on the platform. So we're logged into the platform on a PC this time using the Chrome browser and we're logged in as the user administrator. As you can see from the left hand side of the screen, the administrator has a lot more capabilities in the platform software than what we saw when we were logged in as Chris. In this case, there are a number of tabs across the top of the screen. These indicate storage volumes or various RAID arrays and USB drives that are connected to the system. The first thing we want to do to implement this workflow is to set up the project spaces in which the editor will work. To start out with, we've set up a project called Shoot 43 Project. Let's just go in and take a look at the properties of that project. Its name is Shoot 43. It has various capabilities. There's no used space here, but the maximum amount of space that we've assigned for that volume is 40 gigabytes. We've also set it up to include the assets in search, so in metadata search and to be able to generate proxies for any video that we place into that volume. If we double click on the volume we can see by opening it up that there's nothing in it. The other thing we've done up here on our nearlined volume is we've set up a project called Shoot 43 Backup. And in this case we're backing up the primary volume to this backup volume so that any modifications or edits that are done in the primary volume are automatically backed up to another nearline system. This gives the ultimate safety for ensuring that data is backed up immediately in the system. So let's continue our workflow example by ingesting the media that we have stored on our USB drive. We've plugged the USB drive into the system and it shows up as a storage volume tab here at the top. And we're going to take the data that comes in on that USB drive and we're going to use the data management capabilities of the platform to copy that over into our project space. So we're starting here with what's on the USB drive. We're going to copy it into the project folder. We're going to say that do that as fast as we possibly can and we're going to schedule it immediately. We could set it to schedule for another time, maybe at night when no one's using the system. We'll go ahead and create that task and the system will go off and begin working on transferring that data from the USB drive 
into our project drive. As you can see, it's an active task in the system. During the transfer, if you look at the performance tab, you can see under the storage groups, the system is automatically transferring the information from that USB drive over to the project space, which we are going to use to edit. Looking back at the project screen now, you can see since this project was set up to generate proxies, the system is automatically reviewing that footage and generating proxies for our ability to look at that later. So let's take a look at the information that was transferred from the USB drive into our project folder. If I double click on that, the system will bring up the information and again we're looking at the share on the server of all the videos that were copied into the space. What's also important is to take a look at our nearline system where we had set up our backup. In this project volume now, if we double click and open that, we will see that the system has created a complete duplicate, real-time duplicate, of all of the information that was in the original project directory over to the backup directory. This ensures that as we're doing editing that all of our information is double backed up. Finally, let's go into the system and give the user, Chris, permissions to get access to this project. So we'll go into the permission structure. We'll click on Chris. We'll take a look at Shoot43 project and give Chris modify access to that particular space. We also want to give him access to something called the final output transcode in and final output directories. That will allow him to do some remote server transcoding, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Okay, so now let's switch over to the user Chris, which is using the Mac platform. And you can see now that user that Chris automatically has access to our project, Shoot43 project, because we gave him that access as the administrator. And Chris can mount this volume very simply by opening that up and now see all the footage in that volume which was transferred from our USB drive over to the editing volume. And now let's say that Chris is going to go ahead and go into Premiere and he's going to open that project and create a project and ingest some of that footage so he can begin editing. So we'll, we'll create a new project here. We'll go ahead and do it on the volume that we set up, this Shoot43 project. We're going to look in our media drive and see all of this footage and we'll just go ahead and create a couple of shots. Nothing complex. And we won't go through the editing process but we can take a look at it here. And let's say Chris is uh, satisfied with his edit so he's going to go ahead and export the media. And we're going to export it. Take a look here. We're going to export this media to something called Final Output Transcode In. And the idea of this workflow is that we want to go ahead and export the final footage into a transcode in folder, which is then going to transcode it into three different formats for us, which really improves our workflow and cuts down on the time that the editor has to wait. So let's go ahead and mount this drive real quickly. And in Premiere again, we will export the media and we're going to export it here to this drive that we set up called Final Output Transcode. Go ahead and start the export and the system will write that entire video file back to the share, back to the volume and as soon as that's done, the platform workflow server will begin to transcode that media into multiple formats. Because of the powerful processors on the platform server, you can see when we look at the performance tab here under administration, the system is working pretty hard on those transcodes, but that happened automatically in the background. Of course, Chris the editor doesn't see that and doesn't get delayed by the work that the server is doing. He can go off and continue to work on the project or on some other project while the server is working away. 
After the transcode is complete, Chris can come in and look at the final output volume by mounting it and taking a look. And when we set up the transcode, we set it up to transcode into full frame, MP4 iPad, MP4 iPhone, and as many different output formats as you would like to ensure that your workflow is most efficient. So no matter if you are managing assets, editing, transcoding, rendering, or a system administrator that is just making sure that everything runs smoothly, Platform Series 4 has the ability to improve your workflow, not just a shared storage device, but a workflow server. Contact Promax Systems or your local Promax platform reseller for more information.